Operating a public transit agency for a city the size of Columbus isn't easy. For all the talk online, including on this channel, about how to make transit better, actually making real improvements in the real world is really hard. That's why I was so excited that the good people of the Central Ohio Transit Authority, CODA, allowed myself and channel contributor Kyle Campbell to come and tour one of their maintenance facilities to get an inside look at the great work that they are doing to transform that system, especially their transition to battery electric buses. We got to talk to staff who are making that transition happen, as well as an electric bus operator. It was a great visit. Welcome to Heartland Urbanist. Let's go. My name is Matt Caffrey. I'm a dad and an organizer in Columbus, Ohio. Subscribe to the channel for more videos about the people working to make our cities and transit systems better. I want to say a big thank you to CODA for letting us get a peek behind the scenes. I won't pretend to be objective about CODA or about public transit. We are pro public transit and public transit operators and staff on this channel. One more quick note. The audio quality in this video doesn't meet my usual standards, so apologies about that. I'll be investing in a better mic system soon. Chapter one, the facility. We kicked off our visit by touring the facility itself. We saw where the buses are stored, maintained, fueled, and charged. We were particularly interested in how CODA is transitioning to support battery electric buses. Just got to say, as somebody who rides a bike a lot behind buses, I really appreciate the switch away from diesel. Yeah, no Right away, we got to see the electric charging infrastructure for those buses. There are 10 installed at this facility, and there will be another 40 at a facility later this year. As an EV driver myself, I immediately recognize them. They look just like the EV fast chargers you'd see at an Electrify America station. So is this like a CCS plug, like the same as you'd have on an electric car, or is it a different? I think it That's is. the same plug. That's yep. so funny. So it's me. universal. But for these buses, these are actually the slow chargers, the overnight chargers. To fast charge, Coda plans to strategically install a few chargers along bus routes. Those are called pantograph chargers. They seem really cool. There's currently no pantographs in service for um, schematic design right now. So we do have um, six sites We are pulling up to a, a stop where you're picking up customers. There's a layover. Um, there will be a pylon that's going to tell, show the op operator where to stop, and then uh, basically a strike, and then uh, a button just on the inside of the bus. He presses that. The pantograph just signals. Yep, and it comes down and it just hits the guide rails. That's it. They don't even have to get out of the no, I can. Wow, it that's can. way more. Yeah, and that's what it's for. It's just for those short stopovers to get a little bit of juice for the five or ten minutes that it stopped. That's exactly right. Really you should probably get back what you lost in that crap. Chapter two. The bus. While we were taking a look at the charging infrastructure, an electric bus pulled up. We wouldn't have heard it, except luckily I was looking in the right way, so I saw it coming. We went over and asked the operator if we could tour the bus, and we ended up chatting with him. I'm James. James, nice to meet you. Um, so yeah, so how long have you been a operator? Uh, 27 years. Wow. Thank you very much for that service. That's amazing. <laughs> and then how long have you been driving the electric bus? Uh, it's going to be in, in the fight. Wow, and what would have been 2021 then? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow, very cool. Uh, how's it different? Uh, it's different as far as if you have a lot of power to it. I bet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and it's, uh, it rides smooth. It rides really smooth. Do you, so, so better acceleration, I take it, and yes. then smoother operation. And then do you notice the difference in the sound, the, the volume of the vehicle? Uh, I can even hear. Right. Yeah. Nothing. I mean, even the passengers get on and say, I didn't even hear it coming up. <laughs> yeah. You know, just look up on me. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And the rat, they have no, uh, actually, there's no CNG. Right. You know, it's just a smooth, quiet ride. Yeah. Yeah. They I like that. it. Uh, you couldn't ask for a more expert opinion than a well-regarded veteran operator. Electric buses are quieter, cleaner, more comfortable, have better acceleration, which helps reduce dwell time when buses often struggle to pull back into traffic, and they're even a little roomier. All right, let me, let me hop on it. Are there any differences that you notice when you start operating this bus instead of the others? Uh, none. None. In terms of the, the 
Because I was saying, like, well, in an EV, it has more space. Okay, that's what I was looking for. I thought that that might be the case. Sounds like a strong endorsement to me. Chapter three, the chat. After our tour, we headed to a conference room to chat with Joe and Jeff. My name is Joe Massey. I'm the Director of Construction Services here at CODA. My name is Jeff Bullen. I'm the uh, Director of Public and Media Relations here at CODA. One of the first things we discussed was CODA's diesel-free and net-zero pledges and how battery electric buses play into hitting those goals. We want to get to uh, zero net emissions and, you know, we align with the City of Columbus uh, climate action plan, and our goal is to get um, zero net emissions and zero net pollutants by um, 2045. Wow. As cities around the world work to meet their carbon emission reduction targets and improve transit for their residents, many are adopting battery electric buses. As we've just heard, battery electric buses have major advantages over diesel buses, but the transition is not without its challenges. First, Coda has to procure the buses. In 2021, actually, the facility that you're sitting in your fields became diesel free, which was a, a you know a, a milestone for us. And by the end of this year and the start of 2025, we will uh, our goal is to uh, decommission our last uh, diesel bus. So and 12 years really to go from 100% diesel to zero. That's it. That's, 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 that's exactly right. And that 12 year is a, it's a planned 12 year cycle. It so, kind of averages out to about what 28 buses a year that cycle out and cycle in. Yeah, that's exactly right. The way that we've uh, you know purchased our uh, fleet fixed route bus fleet vehicles has, has been on a 12 year cycle. Mm. And so that's why that 12 years was figured in. And, um, you know, um, CNG was moving away from diesel was a big victory, but we weren't going to stop there. Today, Coda has 13 electric buses in service and will soon have 11 more, but that's still a long way to go. Transitioning to electric isn't as simple as just buying the new battery electric buses. Coda has to build out charging infrastructure and rework its operations. We uh, deployed 10 um, 150 kilowatt mm. AVB charging stations. These are depot chargers, overnight chargers. Um, takes anywhere from five to seven hours to charge a vehicle. Okay. And uh, we currently have uh, another 40 that we're looking to deploy at our other uh, main bus garage in McKinley. I think it's important to say that, you know, we, we have about a 60 mil $65 million investment in McKinley to upgrade that facility not only to make it uh, better for our employees to work, but also include electrification. And that is where the majority of our electrification will be. Mm -hmm. A lot of these buses that you'll see here get will get moved back there will, where they will be uh, charging every night as well. And the other method is what's called a panograph charger, which is a quick high voltage charger that's meant to charge the bus uh, en route. Mm -hmm. um, and that will, um, you know, give you about a uh, percent and a half of battery life uh, per minute of charge. There's a number of different considerations uh, when, um, you know, planning for where you're deploying uh, just the pantograph chargers alone. At the end of the day, we need to be able to deploy all of our buses on all of our routes. That's our goal. Mm -hmm. And so uh, placing, uh, you know, the, the pantographs in a location where we can now um, deploy an electric bus on a route where we couldn't before is a reality of, of the locations that we've uh, selected. With range from 150 to 200 miles, electric buses today can only serve on about 60% on CODA's routes. That's why pantographs are so necessary. It's going to take uh, changing the way we schedule our uh, system to make sure that there's enough time to get that in route charging to educate our operators on how to do that. Yeah, it's, it's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's challenging. Um, it's, it's new technology. I think we have to be real about the challenges of our battery electric bus program if we're ever going to overcome them. So it's going to take time. But once the transition is finished, our air will be cleaner, our streets will be quieter, and our buses will be able to pull into traffic more easily. But maybe the biggest anticipated benefit, the total cost of operation over the lifetime of the buses should be lower, allowing these precious transit operating dollars to go towards providing more and better service, not just sort of the equipment and maintenance. The studies that uh, we've done and, um, you know, the information that we're gathering, we have 
you know, obviously a number of electric buses that are already deployed yeah. and uh, we had in service for quite some time now. And, you know, um, there's less maintenance. And speaking of more and better bus service, we also discussed how all of this intersects with the city's exciting transit expansion plan, Link Us. It's an eight billion dollar investment when all is said and done. Yeah. But it's it's not just improving transit access, but make making us uh, be better connected with bike paths and 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 walkways and. Uh, better uh, sidewalks, more sidewalks in neighborhoods that haven't ever had sidewalks, mm -hmm. uh, making it a more bikeable, walkable uh, transit community, and then building uh, bus rapid transit in uh, on corridors that connect you better to affordable housing, mm -hmm. to education, to hospitals, to jobs. I mean, yeah. it's just multifaceted. And if you look at the details of uh, everything that's in the high capacity design, it's, it's really built for sustainability, zero net emissions, and speed. Yep. Yeah. And so those are pretty two big, and it's affordable, you know, yeah. two pretty big boxes that, that are checked. Yeah. You know. Take action. I'll have much more to share about Link Us in an upcoming video, so subscribe to the channel and make sure you don't miss it. And if you want to help advocate for more transit that's quieter and cleaner, join your local transit advocacy organization. In Columbus, that's Transit Columbus. Link in the description. If you're in Columbus, please vote for the Link Us initiative this November. Or wherever you live, vote for pro-transit candidates, including President Biden, who has done more for transit and passenger rail than any president in the modern era, including securing historic funding for electric buses. If you enjoyed this video, press the like button and make a contribution to the channel via YouTube membership or LibrePay so I can make more videos to spread the word about our great cities in the Midwest. Heartland Urbanist is also available ad-free on urbanist.video, a great open source community. Go check it out. Thanks for watching and see you next time.